This series was funded by great viewers just like you over on Patreon. Check out the description or end of the video to hear how you can take part in making the show even more amazing. Hey everyone, Kaichin Kumba here and welcome to another episode of Witch Ninja, a series that looks at media's most popular shinobi to see which are good and which are bad. And today we're going to be talking about a group of ninjas we honestly didn't expect to see, the Sheikah from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Well, to be fair, there have always been clues in the Zelda franchise pointing the Sheikah in that direction. As far back as the Nintendo 64 era, we saw firsthand how they borrowed ninja concepts, using Deku Nuts as flash bombs to escape, deceptive disguises to throw people off their trail, Though, to be fair, I don't think white was exactly the best choice of color for their sneaky suits. But where the Zelda franchise prior only hinted at it, Breath of the Wild literally beats you over the head with the fact that the Sheikah are ninja. No question. Some examples are a bit more subtle than others, but today we're going to be breaking down the true history and culture of the Shinobi, and how Nintendo has melded it into the deep lore of the Sheikah. But where to start? I suppose the easiest place would be right where we first saw the Sheikah, Kakariko Village. A massive departure from its past iterations, Kakariko Village has moved from a more western fantasy-style town to one mimicking the Jomon period of Japan so hard I had to make a video about it. But I said it then and I'll say it now, there's way more to the Sheikah's cultural origins here than just clothing and architecture. The first hint from the game that Kakariko was leaning more towards a ninja civilization comes from just outside the town. If you visit the Dueling Peak stables while it rains, you learn from an NPC named Sagesa that just ahead, tucked in a circle of mountains, is the village of Kakariko which she calls, quote, an original hidden village. Okay, I thought to myself, I gotta check this out. Lo and behold, I was actually dumbfounded with how much ninja Kakariko had become. Heck, all I had to do was go to the armor shop and have a look at the Sheikah armor to see what was going on here. But that was just a taste of what was to come. One of your first objectives in the game is to talk to Impa. Now, in the past, she's gone from elderly nursemaid to buff butt kicker and back again, but I can honestly say I did not expect this. Look at her! She literally looks like a freaking Hokage from Naruto! In fact, a lot of the old Chika sages you find in the shrines have the exact same appearance as well. So after that shock to the system, I went outside with a much more careful eye and I just... Little G, can you take this? Yeah, I don't blame you for getting overloaded. When you start looking around the village with a careful eye, the ninja references get really overwhelming. For example, one of the first things you can run into is the local cutie pie, Paya, praying in front of what she calls the guardian deities who guide their path as the Sheikah. Yeah, I know she said she was polishing them, but come on, does this look like polishing? No, she's praying to the guardian spirits, who turn out to be frogs. And if that sounds a little familiar, then good on you, because we just got done talking about that in our last episode. Ever since the 1800s, frogs and ninjas were made inseparable through the tale of Jidaya. Very long story short, it's about how Hiroyuki Ogata, aka Jidaya, heir to his father's clan, was raised by an old frog sage who teaches him toad magic and together with his lover Tsunade, reclaims his father's throne from the evil snake ninja Orochimaru. Like I said, long story. So if you want to hear more about the tale, be sure to check out our last video. Either way, it's hard not to see the connection between Kakariko frog guardians who were believed to guide the Sheikah, and the toad sage spirit that guided Jidaya down his own path. Sure, but that's an easy one in my opinion. The next one I found eluded me for freaking months! Now if you go outside and listen closely in the village, you'll hear a light clattering noise. And when you look up and around, you see these little wooden panels all strung together with super tight lines. I knew, I knew I've seen Ninja use these before, but just couldn't pinpoint where until I saw them in one of the best shinobi anime of all time, Ninja Slayer. These things, ladies and gentlemen, are what are known as Naruko Clappers. Similar to the Shishi Odoshi or Deer Scare, Naruko were originally implemented by farmers who would fence off their crops with these little clackers that would make a ton of noise should a tiny bird or freaking wind for that matter blow across them or the string holding them. And for a tool that sensitive, it was only a matter of time before Ninja would begin utilizing them as perimeter traps. Though the Sheikah are using them for their primary purpose, aka keeping critters out of their field, later on in game we actually see their use in a more military fashion. Speaking of battle, another big connection between the Sheikah and Shinobi comes from the Sheikah's primary weapons, the Eightfold Blades. Now, for starters, the name. While it could be assumed that the Eightfold in the name could be the number of times the steel was folded to make the sword, it's also possible that the name comes from the Eightfold Path, one of the most central concepts of Buddhism, which, fun fact, is where ninjutsu traces much of its origin from. Mikyo Buddhism, to be specific. But you can also see that the sword itself is rather short with a hook on the end. 
much different from conventional katanas or even ninjato, which we see ninja carrying around in popular media. That's because most of the time, if a ninja was gonna use a sword, it had to be small in order to carry and hide it easily. Most of the time, ninjas would carry shorter blades like Tanto's or Wakazashi's with them, which is pretty much the same size as the eightfold blade. As for the little hook on the end, it's likely to help with disarming opponents, which, if you know anything about ninja, would be better to have than not. Finally, we see from NPCs like Steen that instead of holding their swords at the hip like most warriors do, the Sheikah hold their weapons perpendicular to their back. While it's only speculation, I've seen a bunch of ninja in media, paintings, and so on who wear their short swords long ways on their back as opposed to at the hip like samurai do. This is likely done in order to keep the blade away from their arms and legs, which will allow them to move more freely. However, it's also likely that drawing one sword from the side would be a faster, easier motion than from the hip. In fact, with many katana, a samurai would have to simultaneously draw the blade and pull the saya down in order to unsheath the blade properly. No way you can do that when you're hanging from the ceiling. Another thing to bear in mind when it comes to the Sheikah is their technical prowess. In Breath of the Wild, they're the ones responsible not only for the Guardians and the many incarnations that they take, but also all of the blue glowy energy weapons you find in shrines. Even in ancient times, they were technologically ahead of modern day Hyrule by leaps and bounds. But something to also keep in mind with Ninja is that they too were some of the most technologically advanced people for their time. Though they were limited by their income, Shinobi were top of the class when it came to chemistry and advanced weaponry. Black powder, gases, medicine, processed foods. It may look primitive now, but back in the feudal days, matchlock rifles and shuriken bombs were the stuff of 007. Finally, out of all these aspects of the Sheikah, there's one little detail, completely optional in the game and lasting only a minute, that ultimately leaks the Sheikah to not just ninja in general, but one of the greatest ninja clans to have ever come out of Japan, the Iga. In a brief memory clip found in the Overworld, we discover that after Link was battered nearly beyond recovery, Zelda instructs her Sheikah bodyguards to take Link to the Shrine of Restoration, but back up a sec. Look at what these guys are wearing. Look how they move. They're ninja through and through. And we've heard in Zelda games long past that Sheikah have been longtime personal guards to the royal family. Now, let's take a look at the Iga of Japan. For generations, they were one of the greatest clans, but their true rise to fame didn't come until their leader, Hattori Hanzo Misanari, became one of the most important retainers to another massive figurehead of Japanese history, Ieyasu Tokugawa, the ultimate unifier of Japan. After a long and fruitful history with the Iga clan and their help to establish him as shogun over the entire country, Ieyasu designated the Iga clan his family's personal guard at Edo Castle and military intel network. From 1582 to 1745, the Iga Ryu clan ninja faithfully served Ieyasu Tokugawa and his family for almost 200 years. You can't, for one second, tell me there isn't a connection between the Hyrule Royal Family's guard of the Shika and the Tokugawa's guard of the Iga. Wait, what about the Yiga? The Yiga? You know, the evil offshoots of the Shika led by Koga, the guys who betrayed the Shika to Ganon? What about them? Oh crap, I forgot all about them. Ah, and there's even more that tie them to ninja history and culture than the Sheikah! Well, why not just do another episode? Lord knows we got plenty of time. Alright, I'll toss this up as a topic to vote on for patrons. I was actually getting nervous about not having enough video game ninja to talk about, so this works for me just fine. And yeah guys, if you want to help support this show, there are a ton of different rewards you can get through Patreon. Heck, the only reason this show exists is because of it. But thank you for watching and thank you patrons for your invaluable support to this series. There's a bunch of episodes of Witch Ninja here on my channel covering shinobi culture from video games to anime to even cartoons and movies, so be sure to check them out. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on all of my newest videos. But until next time everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.